So good morning uh, and welcome to all the distinguished speakers and guests of this uh, uh, business forum between Italy and Slovenia on infrastructure and energy. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome State Secretary Blash Kosharok for joining us. Good morning, State Secretary. His Excellency, the Ambassador of Italy to Slovenia, Carlo Campanile and all the other speakers. Um, I will try to moderate this event. Uh, we have a very tight agenda and we have a very high number of Italian companies attending. And uh, may I say a very highly qualified uh, level of speakers, uh, both Italian and Slovenian. So I'm sure it will be a success. I will just briefly say a couple of things uh, for those who don't know already, Slovenia represents uh, the most important market for Italy in the whole area of the former Yugoslavia plus Albania. Uh, we have a commercial exchange that, according to the Slovenia uh, Institute of Statistics, reached last year 8.6 billion euros and a market share of 13.7%, uh, which places uh, Slovenia uh, at the same level uh, of interchange uh, of, as Canada, Mexico, Brazil, India, and other countries of the G20. Uh, and we are the fifth investor in this country. Um, Slovenia and Italy also have a similar economic structure, uh, which is based uh, on the majority of highly specialized uh, small, um, small and medium enterprises. Uh, that drive the, the export of our two countries. Uh, mm, the sector that last year recorded the greatest increase in Italian export to Slovenia was energy, uh, meaning uh, also electricity, gas, uh, air conditioning, steam, uh, and also energy from renewable uh, uh, sources uh, with uh, a plus 259 Uh, Slovenia is also a very important hub in Europe because uh, it is uh, at a crossroad uh, between two priority pan-European corridor, Corridor 5, which runs from east to west, and Corridor 10 from north to south. So uh, this uh, position makes uh, Slovenia a privileged gateway uh, for goods. Uh, um, from Eastern Europe and Western Balkans uh, to our country and vice versa. Mm. About the economic situation, of course, in recent months, uh, uh, it has heavily been influenced, uh, or the exchanging has been uh, influenced by what is happening. But uh, Slovenian prospect, uh, let me say, in the forecast of the major international financial organization are better than those of many of the other Eurozone markets. Um, why? Because the country entered the crisis with positive main macroeconomic indicators. Uh, therefore, the recovery is expected to be faster probably than in larger countries. And uh, I close saying that uh, the latest uh, issue of the World Economic Outlook from the Internationally Monetary Fund projects Slovenia uh, on a rank at, uh, at the 31st place in the world as GDP per capita. So uh, with these premises, uh, I think that there's a, a, a wide range of opportunities for our companies uh, to cooperate with this country uh, more than uh, what it has been already done uh, in the past year. And uh, saying that, uh, I will uh, ask to His Excellency, our Ambassador Carlo Campanile, to take the floor. Um, please, uh, Ambassador, the floor is yours. <clears throat> uh, thank you. C can you hear me? Oh, oh, thank you, uh, Serenella. First, let me address Worm Tanks' State Secretary Blas 
Talk for the significant support given to the organization of this forum. Uh, of course, I wish also to thank the um, Italian Trade Agency Director General Luongo, who will be joining us later. And uh, I wish also to welcome all the distinguished Slovenian and Italian speakers, the Italian associations, Sanche, Anje, and Oice, and all the Italian companies. You are so numerous. It's a clear evidence of your concrete interest to cooperate and invest in this. Uh, last but not least, let me also express my deepest appreciation for the excellent job done by the Office of the Italian Trade Agency in Ljubljana, in particular by its director, Serena Lamazzon. I can see also in my screen uh, my uh, colleague and friend, Vincenzo Ercole. Very, very, very happy to see you in great shape, uh, uh, Vincenzo. Well, uh, the, really glad to inform you that. There is a real, the political bilateral agenda where our country is, is very, very busy. This year, there is a real upsurge in contacts and, and change at political level. Ministers Logan and Di Maio met several times in the last couple of months and are scheduled to meet again on the 10th of this month. Ministers are also in frequent contact and constant communication. Looking forward, we are in the process of organizing the meeting of the coordination committee, bilateral coordination committee at ministerial level, uh, which is now planned for the first quarter of the next year I mean, uh, uh, in Rome. Let me give some very short introductory remarks on the specific topics of the forum. We are all aware that post-COVID-19 environment will call for a new and more sustainable approach to growth. The member states will need to tackle the economic impact of coronavirus in a framework interconnected economic system and the urgent need to do sustainability at the ears of the European financial system. It's important to rethink our traditional patterns of cooperation and try to identify new solutions for future growth. Between Italy and Slovenia, so economically and culturally related and closely linked. Since resurgence and reintroduction respective measures in many member states is keeping growth forecast subject to an extremely year of uncertainty also for 2021. Uh, all know the Commission autumn forecast very, very negative. 9.9% for Italian GDP and 7.1% less for uh, Slovenia. In recent years, the general trend was to approach distant markets that could suggest great economic returns. The COVID-19 crisis highlighted new logistics and transport problems around the world that are inducing us to reevaluate neighboring markets. Regional value chain should be a priority for our countries. Reduce vulnerability, increase resilience in industrial development. Infrastructure as well as low carbon circular economy are key. The transport infrastructure network is very expensive with four by roads and highways to the strategic position of the country center of two pan-European communication corridors. Porto Copa is also an essential resource and communication. If there is a plan for the modernization of the railway network. Senior Minister of the Environment and Territorial Planning, A. Biziak, presented to us some an update list of the infrastructure investment, an ambitious plan, 7.7 billion euros are expected to be completed in the coming year. Includes the 87 projects, most of them related to transport, energy, environment, public health. With in mind, it will also be essential to relaunch the private investments to public-private partnership and financing operations to support European public funding. 
of course, that the Italian companies enabled to provide their valuable contribution factional and efficient. It's a, I think it's also important to, to recall, uh, and we should have in our mind that Italy just started yesterday the presidency of G20, and Slovenia will assume the presidency of the European Union on 1st July next year. Two important opportunities to look beyond the crisis in the perspective of the sustainable, positive, and resilient recovery. And where the spirit in Green Deal and the vision representing the next generation. You. Uh, so I will, um, I'll, I'll be very short. I will finish here my, my, uh, my introductory remarks. I don't w want to waste time uh, for, for uh, useful for, for uh, uh, the presentation and uh, questions and, uh, um, um, and replies. Um, I wish you all a good work and once again, thank you all for your attention and support. Uh, so this, um, this forum, this exercise was initially conceived in a different way. We uh, have been forced by the circumstances to have this in this uh, digital. But, but the idea behind this is to replicate it in presence next year when the conditions in both countries will be met. So um, thank you, uh, thank you all, and uh, um, uh, I wish you all good work and, and, and fruitful exchange of views. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, I would uh, uh, pass the word to uh, Mr. Roberto Carpaneto. Mr. Roberto Campaneto is Vice President for Internationalization of OISCE, which is the Italian Association of Architectural Engineers, Technical, Economic Advisor Organization. He is also board member of the European Federation of the Engineering Consultancy Association. Please, uh, Mr. Carpaneto, the floor is yours. Thank you. And switch, uh, switch on your microphone, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mussoli. I forgot to switch off <laughs> the microphone. And uh, good morning to everybody. For us, uh, today is a very important uh, opportunity for something that actually we planned to do together last March, but unfortunately we weren't able to, to do it. But uh, I think it's a good result that uh, we continue uh, as association and uh, together with the Italian Trade Agency, our Ministry of Foreign and uh, International Cooperation and all the other organizations, we continue to do uh, we call them web mission, and in this case, a web forum, uh, uh, you know, in particular for the energy and infrastructure sectors with our friends from uh, from Slovenia. And uh, this is uh, this is an opportunity for me to represent shortly what is OICE and maybe try to invite our associates to work with. Uh, in the Slovenian market, as well as Slovenian company work together with us, because I want also to say hello uh, to the um, corresponding uh, Slovenian organization uh, of engineering architectures and consultancy company. And, they, and I'm very happy to have uh, important representative of this organization, of this organization together uh, this morning. Uh, I will share with you a very short presentation of what I'm going to say this morning. Let's see if I'm able to do it. I think you should see the presentation. Now we put OK. So, first of all, OICE. OICE is uh, uh, created in 1965. As I said, this member of the 
global um, world organization of federation of international organization of co uh, engineering company and EFCA that I honor to be member of the board and of course part of the confederation of Italian industry. We have uh, about 400 uh, companies associated in this organization and we represent uh, for our engineering services a turnover in the order of 3 billion euros. Important point: 60% of the revenue of these uh, of, of these companies is abroad, so is in the international market, and we will see where. And uh, we represent also something like in the order 20 to 23 thousand uh, engineers, architects, geologists, and economists in Italy. We also, sorry. Okay. We operate mainly for our. We represent, of, of course, the interest of this uh, of this company in terms of development and promote the engineering and architectural culture in the different market. And in particular, myself, I work together with uh, uh, with other important people and. Uh, Marco Ragusa will follow also this this meeting and will will. Uh, participate later on to this meeting. Pro we promote the internalization of our comp of our company, and this kind of uh, web uh, forum and, and web mission, as we call, are very important for us because they uh, this uh, opportunity gives uh, the opportunity to our company and to our corresponding company in the other country to know each other and to understand which are the the I the area of potential opportunities and of course we provide advisory services to our to our uh, members we promote as i said the presence of engineering company and we do it uh, not only with uh, in, um, governative international organization of the different of the different country but with the, uh, with the institution and international banks in ifis uh, world bank brd which many times are uh, the the tools through uh, the uh, different projects let's say they finance uh, important projects around the world and uh, let's say uh, working with that does means that we start our company start to work all around the world uh, through this international uh, organization we, this opportunity like this one this morning promote the networking and it is very important one of the key point for us as uh, as as italian organization we always recommend to work together with the local companies because we can uh, let's say exchange our expertise exchange our uh, let's say technologies but we always need to have uh, uh, knowledge of the local culture and uh, therefore we can learn a lot from the technical and uh, each other both parties from the technical point of view but we learn a lot from local partner uh, the local chart culture and local approach to the project development. Uh, the area where we work uh, is are many. I don't want to read all of them, but you can see that many areas from the urban planning to territorial planning to civil engineering, maritime engineering, environmental engineering, hydraulic. So it's it's very unusual, let's say, that there are not area where we can work together. There are many, and uh, as far as I know about the development plans that are foreseen in the near future in Slovenia, I'm sure that there will be there will be important opportunity to work together. Just to give you an idea uh, where we work for what we work, you can see that for transportation and infrastructures and for energy, B those two are the most important area where our companies work around the world around the world so uh, this uh, uh, i would say is uh, it's very important compared to the plans particularly in infrastructure and in transportation which are uh, i know uh, envisaged for in, in in this country in slovenia if uh, if we 
see where we work around the world, I would say that uh, you can see that uh, about 13% and 11% of our company work within uh, Europe, uh, within Europe, both um, part of the uh, European Union and outside the European Union. But it's a one, four, one fourth, let's say, more or less, of our activities abroad is still in Europe. So it's very important, and Slovenia represents, for sure, an important market for us. Uh, the priorities, let's say, the priorities mean what we expect to do in the near future. Again, we give an important portion to the European country, both EU and not EU, 28% and 16%. And uh, and in these countries, uh, in this country we work. In particular, in, in Slovenia, we have uh, several companies working already in Slovenia. Not many, I would say, but uh, not many. I think they are in the order of 10 companies within our associates, which are based with an office and registered in Slovenia, making business in Slovenia through uh, a local organization together with uh, Slovenian employees, etc. Many others are working in Slovenia from the Italian, from the Italian offices on, or abroad offices. And this is very important because from Slovenia we can work, work uh, together we can work for sure in the Slovenia market, but together we can work in other market, in uh, in uh, in other market in that particular region, and not only. The area where we work mostly are transport infrastructure, environmental engineering, energy, urban infrastructure, and ICT. And I know that uh, uh, I, we know that there are about 200 projects now in the, for example, in infrastructure and transportation, in important projects, I mean, uh, which, uh, which uh, foreseen a very important investment in Slovenia for a total of out of 8 billion euro in Slovenia, both for the road grid and for the railway systems. Also in the energy sectors, uh, we know that in Slovenia there are important uh, important plans where our company can provide their services and they experience together with the Slovenian companies in the uh, electric power system, in the net network of gas systems, but also in buildings, energy for buildings, etc. Working together in the so-called so Green Deal for, uh, that is uh, one of the aim of the European Union uh, for, the next, uh, for the next years. Uh, that, let's say that in Europe we know that in particular in, in, in the EFCA region uh, we have an important market, and these are these are the numbers. So I really uh, invite our, let's say, I really invite our uh, companies to try to be in contact with uh, with a local company and uh, form a strong uh, teams to work together around the world. Let me see, see if I can now switch on. Okay, and I should be back to the, my persons. Am I or not? Not yet. Now, yes. Okay. So, thank you to thank you to all, and uh, uh, I really uh, I really want to stress the point that it is just one initial point of contact for our company to work together, and we are very interested to listen, which are from the important stakeholder of the Slovenia market to which are to listen, which are the opportunities that our country can pursue. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much to Mr. Carpaneto. I would like to pass the word to Councillor Vincenzo Ercole Salazar Sarfield, who is the Global Head for Italian Infrastructure at our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation and at ANCE, which is the Italian National Association of Building Construction. Please, Councillor. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I'm really delighted to attend this business forum that has been organized 
by the Italian Embassy, the Italian trade agencies, and the three industrial associations, ANCE, ANIE, and OICE. Altogether, these organizations are in the position to design, build, and operate together with local partners, critical and complex uh, projects in every country. A special thanks goes uh, to all the organizers. Uh, Serenella, uh, under your leadership, uh, the, the Italian Trade Agency office there is working wonderful, and thank you for outstanding preparatory work. Uh, a special thanks to the uh, representatives of the two governments, the Italian ambassador in Ljubljana, my friend Carlo Campanile, and State Secretary Blas Koshrock. I hope to pronounce quite good the, the name. Just a few remarks on uh, what we do and why we are here joining you today. ANCE supports and promotes the internalization of Italian construction industry, which is one of the most important and advanced in the world in terms of technology, uh, design, execution and management skills. The Italian construction companies partner with international and local firms providing technology transfers and contributing to the development of highly skilled technical and labor workforces locally. So they don't steal jobs, they create jobs. Anche companies currently manage about 800 construction sites in 92 countries with a total contract value of 82 billion euro and a portfolio of uh, 51 billion euro, uh, 13 billion of works in Europe. Uh, Slovenia and Italy have very good bilateral relations, as our ambassador already pointed out. Slovenia boasts an excellent geographical position at the center of two important pan-European corridors and as a well-developed transport infrastructure, as uh, Italian trade agency director already mentioned. The country is therefore perfect uh, to enter in the Balkans. From, from, from Italy. The Balkan area is highly strategic and of great interest for Italian construction companies and especially for small, small and medium-sized enterprises. And over the last few years, there has been a strengthening of the Italian presence in the region. Uh, as part of this process, Italian construction companies intend to play a leading role in infrastructure development aware of the great opportunities that this sector represents, making a joint effort with local government and private sector. The new investment plan for infrastructure and transport with a total budget of almost 8 billion euro for the development of road, rail and gas network, as well as other interesting projects, has been carefully examined by our companies and we believe there is a lot of potential opportunities uh, to work together with the Slovenian uh, counterparts. I'm fully confident that from this uh, web forum, Italian companies will have a better understanding of the many opportunities and will be able to participate after in uh, public tenders together with local companies. I rest here at your disposal and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this web form. Thank you very much to Councillor Vincenzo Ercole and I give the word to Maria Rosaria Fragasso, who is the Head of International Affairs at ANIE. ANIE is the Italian National Federation of the Electrotechnical and Electronic Sector. Please. Uh, Distinguished guests, colleagues, it's a great pleasure to be here today on behalf of ANIE. ANIE is uh, the national federation within Confindustria representing the Italian electrical engineering and the electronic industry. 
First of all, I would like to thank the Italian trade agency and the Italian, um, the embassy, Italian embassy in Slovenia for organizing this uh, very interesting business forum. And I would like to thank, of course, the Slovenian speakers who will give companies, Italian companies today, the opportunity to get to know and deepen the interesting development plans uh, in your country. Now I would like to briefly introduce the ANIE system. ANIE with uh, 1,500 member companies represent the Italian electrical engineering and electronic industry that provides you know, strategic and key enabling technologies for public and private infrastructures in the field of energy, transport, industry and building. Any industry is composed by technological leading manufacturing sectors accounting 84 billion euros of total turnover, 500 employees, 4% of total turnover spent on research and development. With reference to the focus sector of today's event, the Italian electrical engineering and electronic industry can supply innovative and enabling technologies that can play a crucial role in infrastructural development. Looking, for instance, at the energy industry, which in the aggregate represents a turnover of 7 billion euros, the Italian excellence is known and appreciated worldwide. On average, more than 60% of the total turnover is achieved on foreign markets. Electromechanical technologies place Italy on second position in Europe by size of turnover after Germany, of course. With regard to railway and electrified transport, with a total turnover of 4 billion euros, the Italian industry historically represent a sector of technological excellence. Today, sustainability is an imperative when it comes to designing, creating and maintaining infrastructures. The concept of sustainable infrastructure goes beyond climate change impacts. It also includes either environmental consideration, including climate resilience, economic and financial aspects, of course, governance issues and social considerations. After the pandemic, there is now a unique window of opportunity for a big sustainable infrastructure push for a green recovery to build back better. Electrical engineering industry is ready to face the challenges of this scenario. Looking at the energy industry, the implementation of smart grids is a major challenge. Energy efficiency is an aspect that is found across the board. Another important area is the redefinition of mobility in sustainable terms, not to mention more generally the added value offered by technologies for the creation of smart cities. Italian and Slovenian companies can cooperate to build together a smart society, ready to face the challenges of the future. The world after the pandemic needs to become smarter to face globalization ch challenges, to rebuild competitiveness and give a strong impulse to economic growth. Today's meeting represents an important opportunity to strengthen industrial, commercial, technical partnership and boost synergies to enable growth and progress for both our countries. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much to Maria Rosaria Fragasso. Uh, and now uh, it is my honor to pass the word to His Excellency the State Secretary of the Ministry of uh, uh, Infrastructure of the Slovenian Republic, Mr. Blaš Kosherok, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Serenela. Hello, hello everybody again. Your Excellency, Ambassador Campanile, hello. Uh, dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, let me say firstly, um, I would thank also 
the Italian trade angels, especially to you, dear Serenilla, and of course, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Campanile, in, in, uh, Ambassador to Italy to Ljubljana, to, for organizing this conference. Uh, it is my great pleasure to address you today on this occasion. I mean, it was, uh, we had, what, two months to organize everything. Uh, unfortunately, there is no follow-up meeting in Rome. Hopefully, as soon as possible, we will make this follow-up in person. Uh, despite uh, the ongoing COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which has affected, as, uh, as you know, or as well people, as economy, conferences like this today uh, can offer, let's say, a great opportunity to explore further possibilities to expand, to deepen, already solid, as my, my uh, everybody which, which was, which was uh, speakers before me, have, we have a great opportunity to explore further possibilities and to, as I said, to, to, to deepen it and to establish uh, economic cooperation between our two countries. Our cooperation, as mentioned, has always been intensive and also diversified. The importance of the Italian market uh, for Slovenian companies is uh, shown by the growth of the foreign trade flows and the constant growth of Slovenian exports to Italy. According to our bank, Bank of Slovenia, exports from Slovenia to Italy reached uh, some um, 3.9 billion euros in year 2019 and shown the steady growth. While imports from Italy to Slovenia amounted 4.8, almost 5 billion euros in 2019. As neighbors, as friends, Slovenia and Italy have a long-standing relationships in the, in the fields of transport and also energy. Nevertheless, these relations, however, can and have the potential, this is my firm belief, uh, to be, to be imp improved in the next, in the next uh, years to come. Slovenia is uh, currently very active in building new infrastructure as well as modernizing our existing transport infrastructure according with the TNT standards. Our goal is also to enable better integration in the energy market. Um, there are new, new ideas, new buildings in, in, in energy infrastructure, meaning in, also in transmission lines, also in distribution lines, also in the new production units, what you will which you will hear uh, with uh, our new uh, next speaker. So, um, the most important project at the moment is definitely the construction of the second railway track Divacha Koper, uh, worth approximately 1.5 billion euros. And additionally, the project of the railway fast track between Venice and Ljubljana, this is also something we still keep in mind. This is what I want to highlight. Slovenia is also engaged in further development of Port of Koper. We will also have today a speaker from, from, from Port of Cooper, which is one of the strategically most pronounced sources of freight transport in Slovenia. As I mentioned already, the priority for Slovenia remains the modernization of the existing infrastructure, especially the railway infrastructure, and uh, to give way to a cleaner transport uh, or clean mode of transport um, while transport and energy projects need to be aimed at achieving of the EU, EU climate goals. So the sustainable transportation, railways and so on is one of the, one of the highest points in our agenda as well. Uh, Slovenia and Italy are, closely, are close partners in the European Union, which has set a goal to become a carbon neutral by 2050. It's a quite high uh, goal, but I'm more than convinced that we will, we will reach it if we work together, of course. The demands, concrete, this, this demands concrete actions from all relevant stakeholders, including the governments. We therefore believe that uh, the in increased cooperation between Italy and Slovenia, Italian and Slovenian companies in the field of transport and energy will enhance good neighborly relations, provide mutual benefits and help us tackle the climate change of the present and future together. I'm delighted to be joined uh, today by the representatives of the key companies from transport and energy sectors uh, who will provide the detailed information of our, or, let's say, their activities. Uh, I'm looking forward to a fruitful debate. 
which I'm convinced will result in new ideas, new opportunities, new business opportunities uh, for the cooperation between our two countries, between our two many, many companies which have joined us. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. I will, I'm looking forward to hear uh, our speakers today and then maybe something will come up. This is for sure. So thank you very much and I wish everybody a nice day. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, for your uh, inspiring uh, speech. Uh, I would uh, uh, share the floor with uh, Mr. Miran Gajsek, uh, who is uh, uh, head of uh, Urban Planning Department here in the Municipality of Ljubljana. Uh, that I know he is here, but I don't see him. Um, Mr. Gaishak? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear yeah. us? Uh, yes. Okay. Very good. Now we cannot see you, but we know you are there. I hope that uh, we can hear each other. Good morning. Good can morning. you see the slide? Yes, definitely. Good. Please. Uh, okay. Go ahead. The slide is slide is maybe better than myself. <laughs> However, so uh, very short and brief. Uh, I will present, uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to, ex to explain a little bit regarding the Ljubljana Railroad and even water transport note and uh, good morning to everybody, to excellencies and uh, dear colleagues from Italy and from Slovenia. And uh, I will present, uh, I will present uh, today the very short uh, about where we are, uh, uh, somebody explained this uh, extraordinary uh, geostrategic position then uh, regarding Ljubljana transport node and intermodal railroad terminal and even uh, for Ljubljanica river navigation projects. And in the very beginning I would like to say that uh, I do believe very strong that uh, the European macro regions are very good tool for the cooperation especially now because we have to to cooperate and to use the recovery fund the european new, uh, new green deal fund and so on so uh, uh, slovenia is um, the only country which is actually in the free uh, official um, european union macro regional st strategies uh, uh, so the Alpine Arc, Adriatic Ionian one and Danube one. Why is this so important? There is one extremely, extremely important project in Europe, uh, Rail Baltica, which is the result of the Baltic Sea macro regional strategy. So the five European Union countries um, and, and uh, this is the, the fast uh, uh, fast rail for 240 for passengers and 120 for freight transport and as you can see social and economic benefits are extremely high uh, so this is the this is the presentation of this of this project this is the ongoing project so uh, Ljubljana transport note um, uh, so where we are we are again we are in the Free Seas Initiative uh, Priority Interconnection List, and uh, we are, as uh, uh, as was said in the morning, uh, between two core corridors: Adriatic uh, Mediterranean one and Baltic Adriatic one. And it is um, important now to to start, as well as said by uh, State Secretary Kosorok the reconstruction of the, of the railway between, let's say, Austria or Hungary to, to Port of Copper and to Italy, of course. And uh, this is the map of the, uh, the, the investment opportunities in Slovenia. And uh, again, Ljubljana transport note. Um, 
What is important is uh, the number three, and this is the actually the cooperation, Venice, Trieste, and Rijeka and Copper. This could be a real uh, and powerful alternative to the port of Piraeus, Piraeus in Greece. And the second track, Copper Divacha, is again a very important project. Uh, in Ljubljana uh, is the core railroad terminal, the airport is very near, uh, the core port of Copper, which is, let's say, uh, very near if you are using the, the motorway, but not very near if you are using the existing rail. So we have to improve the situation. So a little bit about the Intermodal Logistics Center Ljubljana. Uh, in our office in the, in the city municipality of Ljubljana, we already three years ago uh, finished the municipal detail land use plan. This is the location in the Ljubljana in red, so a railroad terminal. And, uh, and the site plan on your left is the private investment of the Mercator company uh, logistic terminal and on your right, two phases is the Slovenian Railways railroad terminal. And again, uh, Ljubljanica river navigation project, so Ljubljanica is not a big river, but I have to say that as you probably know, three times of history, in history, it was made the projects for the connection between, between Sava River, Ljubljanica River and Adriatic Sea. So, but we started with the Ljubljanica River, so three river locks, including the historical Joža Plečnik one. There are, uh, I, will, I would like to present to you the projects. We are already starting with the, with the, with the, with the municipal detail land use plan. For the conclusions. Uh, again, European U Union macro-regional uh, cooperation is extremely important for using the Euro European Union recovery funding and European Union Green Deal funding. And what is also important, we the planners, I am special planner, regional planner, urban planner by education and practice, we can help to the investors, to our governments, to European Union, to private companies, to, to start with, uh, with such a large scale and extremely important project. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gajšek. Uh, I must say that living in Ljubljana, for me as a foreigner, it's very fascinating uh, what you said uh, and, uh, and uh, very interesting uh, to see what is uh, what will be in the future for uh, for this beautiful uh, European capital. Uh, I would like to uh, share the screen and pass the word um, with, uh, Ms. Pass, the, pass the word to Mr. Marco Agres, um, who is uh, a technical manager for um, uh, the public holding and uh, Energetica Ljubljana. Uh, and uh, uh, please, uh, uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Agres. If you switch your mic on, please. It's on. It's on. I think that you once more do do you hear me? Yes. Please, Mr. Agresh. Yeah, but uh, I can hear you, but obviously my microphone is not in operation no no no. we can hear you perfectly really yeah good <laughs> okay then uh once more uh thank you very much for this uh, opportunity let me introduce uh, first uh, myself my name is marco agres and i'm a technical manager of uh, energetica ljubljana uh, a member of the public uh, of the public holding uh, of the municipality of ljubljana uh, now I'm going to uh, present uh, our company, our let's say uh, investment, which are which are going uh, which are going on and which are uh, which are in our plans. You know, 
So first, uh, let, let me explain the role of uh, Energetica Ljubljana. Uh, the role of our company is to supply the municipality of Ljubljana uh, with the heat and, uh, and industrial steam for the local, for the local industries. Uh, we are operating the biggest district heating system in the Republic of Slovenia, this is for sure and one of the biggest uh, district heating system in the region, comparable with the system in Graz, Austria, as well as uh, with the system in Zagreb, Croatia. And, uh, the length, just for, uh, for getting the, uh, to, to describe the size of these systems, means that, uh, let's say, the, uh, the length of the pipes of the district heating system is more than uh, 540 uh, kilometers and the length of the gas pipes because we're also distributing the natural gas uh, here in Ljubljana and in the suburbans is in in the range of 1060 and 60 kilometers uh, for we are supplying uh, more than uh, 60,000 flats here in Ljubljana uh, now I'm switch, let's say, uh, to the to the technical to the technical terms. You know, um, actually, the annual production uh, of of our company is, uh, let's say, uh, more than 400 gigawatt hours of of electricity, more than one one uh, one thousand gigawatt hours of of the heat, and more than. 150 50 gigawatt hours of the industrial uh, steam. Uh, for this purpose, we use three cold fire blocks. Two of them were uh, two of, uh, of them have been in operation since 1966, and they are going to be replaced in 2022 with two gas turbines. Block number three, which is equipped also with the after burning grate, means that uh, simultaneously we are burning coal together with the biomass, uh, has been in operation and, uh, since 1984. And let's say uh, we are forcing that we are, we are operating with this old fire block uh, to the end of 2035. As I mentioned, uh, uh, our main, let's say, project is now to, uh, to supplement uh, the coal. Uh, with the with the natural gas, as I said, two four five blocks uh, will be replaced with two gas turbines. Uh, this project is let's say ongoing, um, uh, and uh, as I said, uh, this is one of the biggest. Uh, at this time, is one of the biggest uh, power project in the in the entire uh, Slovenia. What is also, let's say, very important uh, to understand, you know, uh, as you mentioned, uh, or one colleague mentioned here, that decarbonization is one of the role of the European of the European Union, and we are following uh, also this uh, this target. Uh, therefore, uh, also uh, also some uh, some part of the coal is going to be replaced with the municipal waste. This is, let's say, the, the project uh, in the initial phase. Uh, we just finished the profitability study where we compared uh, seven, uh, seven possibilities. And now we are, let's say, we are doing and uh, preparing everything for space planning as well as uh, for the technology, technology uh, researches. Uh, this is, I, I think that, that 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 might be a good opportunity for the Italian company if you are interested uh, in, let's say, in this cooperation means, let's say, in the, this waste treatment, incineration plant, as well as uh, uh, maybe with any or one additional company which is going, which is able to supply, let's say, our company with the natural gas. Because, uh, uh, what is foreseen and what is very important, let's say, for this company, is the annual amount of gas, which is going, which is going to exceed uh, six million of of gigajoules. So we are discussing of uh, of uh, of the range of uh, a little less than two hundred million of cubic meter of this of this fuel. So maybe uh, because I don't want to be uh, too long. Maybe for the beginning, this is from my side uh, complete presentation. 
For, for any further question, I'm always, let's say, uh, available uh, or directly uh, to my email or uh, even, let's say, um, maybe to my colleagues. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Agres. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there will be uh, uh, both uh, during uh, this meeting and after this meeting a lot of questions coming uh, to all the speakers from our uh, uh, companies, our Italian companies. So uh, if we can, whatever we can pass through today, we will. Otherwise, uh, make sure that we will let you know of any uh, other questions that uh, may arrive uh, later after the meeting or in the following days. So we will uh, be sure to, to, to pass all the questions uh, and give all the answers uh, to the Italian companies. Um, okay, so we, uh, we go to our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Sasha Podloga Zdinarsic. She is, good morning. She good morning. is the head of energy policy and the European Union affairs at HSEE Group. HSE is the holding Slovenske Elektrarne and they, 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 they manage all the national power plants. So please, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Podloga, the, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I hope you can hear me all right. Uh, so let me share my screen. Just a moment. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so uh, I would like to start with just a brief uh, overview of the HAC group, uh, uh, who we are and uh, what we do. Uh, we are the largest uh, producer and seller of electricity um, from domestic sources on the wholesale market in Slovenia. We produce around 65% of all electricity in Slovenia and we also produce um, more than 70% of renewable electricity uh, in Slovenia. We are 100% uh, government owned. We have around 3,000 um, employees, and uh, besides being the, the producer and seller uh, of electricity, we also own a uh, coal lignite mine that, that provides the coal for our um, thermal power plant, uh, Shostan. We also provide ancillary services that are needed for the functioning um, of our electricity system, and we also manage different um, energy and environmental projects. Um, as you can see, we have a really uh, balanced uh, production portfolio. Around half of our electricity comes from thermal sources and the other half from hydro sources. And with this uh, balanced uh, portfolio, we are really a, a, key, a key for the security of electricity supply in Slovenia and for the stability of the system, but also crucial for achieving Slovenia's um, renewables targets. So if we look at our production capacities, you can see we have uh, three, uh, three uh, hydropower plant chains that you can see in green dots here. Um, we have 17 large hydropower plants, uh, 26 small ones, and also one pump storage power plant. Uh, and uh, regarding our thermal power, uh, we have two thermal units at the location uh, in, uh, uh, in Shostan, where also our lignite mine is uh, lo located, and uh, they together uh, provide 30% of all electricity supply in Slovenia. And we also have four gas units, two, two at the, the site in Shostan and two at the site in uh, Turbole. Mm. So our um, production portfolio strategy is firstly, uh, firstly based on keeping our existing uh, production fleet in good shape. Uh, and the second part of our strategy is obviously to uh, increase our production portfolio uh, with new renewable production capacities um, and also with low emission capacities to uh, ensure the just transition. Uh, we believe that as we move, uh, uh, as we try to phase out coal as a country, uh, uh, the, the gas is a really important um, bridging technology that would bring us to a climate neutral society. So 
uh, one of the projects we are currently considering is uh, a combined cycle gas turbine project at the power plant uh, Shostan. Uh, the main reasons behind the project are obviously the, the growth of the emission allowances prices, um, the, the fact that the coal will be gradually phased out, as I mentioned, in the next decades. We are uh, currently, um, as a country, preparing the national coal phase out strategy. Uh, we would also like to develop the really valuable energy location at the site, and we also have qualified personnel available. So the project would have two phases. Uh, the first one would be to upgrade the two existing gas units, uh, which would bring us to 151 megawatts of power capacity and the construction could start next year. Uh, the second phase would be to add two uh, additional new gas units with uh, 168 megawatts of uh, power capacity. The construction would start two years after the first phase and the cost of up, the the cost of this uh, uh, this project is around 40 million for the first phase and around 30 million for the second one. Um, so uh, regarding renewable uh, plants, we um, we have three potential wind power plants, uh, wind power project in our pipeline. Um, they are um, all at the northeast um, part of the Slovi of Slovenia, and we are um, talking about um, 14 wind turbines with 3.6 megawatts each. That would bring us to around 46 mega megawatts of power capacity. Uh, we, we hope to start the construction in 2023. It all depends on the siting process, obviously, and uh, the operation could start in uh, 2025 for the first project. Uh, the total cost is around 66 um, million euros. So that brings me to our uh, most important um, project, um, project at the moment, uh, namely the hydropower plants on the middle Sava River. Uh, we have just signed a concession contract in, uh, with the government in October um, for the, the use of hydropower potential after several years of um, negotiations. Uh, we plan to build nine to 12 uh, units. It uh, again depends on the siting process. Uh, the total capacity would, would be 300 megawatts and a yearly production of one terawatt hour. So this would, be, this would actually represent a 25 uh, increase of the renewable share in in electricity production in Slovenia. So this is a really um, important project for Slovenia as a whole. Uh, so what we are planning to do till uh, 2030 is to build three, the first three of the, uh, uh, of the hydropower plants in the chain. Uh, they together would uh, bring around 100 uh, megawatts of power capacity and around 380 uh, gigawatt hours of production. Hopefully, again, uh, depending on the siting uh, process and uh, the, uh, the permits uh, granting procedures, uh, the construction could start in 2023 and the operation of the first hydropower plant could uh, start in 2026. Uh, the total cost of the first three uh, power plants is around 250, uh, 250 million. Uh, that, that is the energy part of the, the, the investment without the, the necessary infrastructure uh, 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 changes. Uh, so as I said, this is currently the most, um, the number one project for us. We are really uh, focusing on starting the the siting process and the process of uh, permit granting uh, as soon as uh, possible. So um, I will conclude my presentation here. If you have any additional questions or if you need any any uh, additional technical information regarding our project, please uh, feel free to contact us. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Vodroga for uh, a very uh, impressive and uh, interesting presentation. Um, I think that there will be, uh, I'm sure there will be a wide possibility for uh, our companies to cooperate in the future.
yeah. with, uh, with this project uh, and I will uh, channel you uh, mm -hmm. all, the, all the requests or uh, uh, any, anything that can come from uh, either the uh, association or the companies. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. thank you. So now I would uh, um, pass the word to Mr. Bastian Riegler. He is a member of the board of DARS. Uh, let me see. Okay, there he yeah. is. Good morning again, Mr. Good Riegler. Morning, good morning. Okay, uh, DARS hello, is the, hello from... uh, yes, it's a, the, the, the a national uh, uh, company uh, managing uh, uh, railways, expressways, and motorways here in Slovenia. Please, uh, Mr. Riegler. Yeah, hello uh, again from Motorway Company in the Republic of Slovenia. First of all, I want to say the, and stress out the, the uh, good cooperation with the Italian uh, authorities, uh, which are uh, responsible for highways, ANAS, Autovia Veneta, and also the region Friuli Venezia Giulia. We had really good cooperation in the past, and I'm sure that we will uh, continue also in the future. Uh, I will try to give you now uh, uh, my presentation just a second and i have a little bit of the problem with this uh, just a second you should have it on your desktop. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, the beginning, uh, the, the few information about our company. We were established in 1993 and start our business in 1994. Uh, the ownership is 100% uh, percent, uh, from Republic of Slovenia. And we have uh, approximately 600 kilometers of motorways and expressways and approximately 1,250 employees. And our annual turnover is between uh, 400 and uh, 500 million euros. Uh, main functions of the DARS. Uh, we operate on, let's say, two contracts with the Republic of Slovenia. One is agent contract, and uh, we, we uh, perform tasks regarding spatial planning and acquire real estate for motorway construction in behalf of Republic of Slovenia. And uh, the concession contract, on its behalf, we organize and manage motorway construction and reconstruction, and we maintain and manage existing motorway. Uh, organization structure. Okay, I want to say uh, some words regarding our tolling system. Uh, we have a uh, vignette system for the vehicles up to 3.5 tons and hopefully uh, we will replace classical vignette with a vignette, electronic vignette, uh, in the beginning of 2022. Uh, and we have for heavy vehicles, uh, we have uh, DARS GO tolling system. It's electronic open tolling system uh, in multi-lane free flow. We introduced that in a 1st of April 2018. And uh, up till now, we are very satisfied with uh, uh, this uh, system. Uh, as you see, the traffic Growth, ev growth every year uh, from uh, 2010 to, to last year. And of course, we have a slight uh, problem this year uh, regarding the COVID crisis. We expect that uh, our incomes, incomes from uh, toll system will be around 80 million euros uh, lower than uh, last year. Uh, but hopefully, uh, next year, the, the situation will improve. Uh, we are responsible, as I said, for 623 kilometer of motorway and expressway. This is the, the plan of our, our infrastructure. And with the, uh, we have here also the, the, our main uh, investments that are going on. Uh, so the, the 
Karavanke Tunnel. Uh, this is the, the uh, project that we are doing uh, in cooperation with the uh, Austrian uh, Highway Authority, ASFINAG. And also, uh, we call it the uh, third X of our uh, motorway system, the north part and the south part. Uh, something more about our investment. So the construction of the second tube of the Karavanke Road Tunnel. Uh, we started uh, to work on this uh, investment uh, in uh, this year, uh, in, in March. Uh, the construction is ongoing. The estimated completion is on in May 2025. The contract value is around 100 million euros, and we have a contractor from Turkey. And after the completion of this project, uh, we will, of course, uh, go on with the uh, uh, electrical and uh, other equipment for, for this tunnel, and then also for with the reconstruction of existing tube of tunnel of Karavanke. The second big and uh, important project is the third development axis that are divided in north and uh, south part. The north is uh, from existing highway to, uh, to Austria. It's four lane expressway, section length is about uh, 30 kilometers, estimated value around 900 million euros. We started construction in October this year and estimated completion will be in 2027. And in south part, there is also four lane expressway in length of approximately 18 kilometers, 400 million euros estimated value. And we uh, hopefully will finish this project in 2028. Uh, so if I summarize in the next 10 years, DARS will invest in new highways and also in reconstruction of existing highways, approximately between two and two and a half billion euros. And of course, we also um, preparing the projects uh, for the, uh, let's say, next de decade from 2030 till 2040. Uh, so we are quite active in this uh, investment field and uh, we are always happy to cooperate with uh, other, uh, let's say, companies or authorities in our field. So that's for me, and uh, thank you, and uh, hope for for the good cooperation also uh, in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Riegler. Uh, we are uh, uh, receiving some uh, some questions from the companies, uh, and then we will see how to handle because our our schedule today is quite tight. But we are on time, eh? so we are following our our schedule very well. Uh, at this point, uh, I will uh, um, pass the word to Micha Butara. Oh, good morning. Uh, hello, he's hello. Deputy Direct hello, he's Deputy Director General at the uh, Slovenian uh, uh, Group of Railways, Slovenske Zelenice. Please, uh, Mr. Butara, uh, the first word of all, with the word. Yeah, first of all, greetings to all from Slovenian Railways. Uh, we had some uh, difficulties regarding technical stuff, so I am now uh, connected by the phone, so I, I couldn't uh, upload the, the, the presentation, which I will send later on through email. Please uh, now do, I will put because down the uh, in case will we will share with the companies, so with yes. the Italian companies. Of course. I will try now, uh, I will put down the phone and, uh, and start with the presentation, and if any questions, then later on I will be available. Just a second. Okay, so basically uh, the Slovenian Railways Group is combined of nine subsidiary comp companies. Each of them covers different fields of work from passenger transport to freight transport and also to construction. Uh, in past years, with the help of our government, and uh, we already made acute steps to modernization, but in next cycle we have still a lot of opportunities. So. Uh, 
uh, regarding the infrastructure projects, uh, uh, they are held, held within our subsidiary called Seja Infrastructure. And all of these projects are in jurisdiction of Ministry of Infrastructure. Uh, maybe just, uh, just to let you know, uh, the main investments regarding the modernization of Slovenian tracks were made, uh, were made mainly in the relation on Ljubljana towards Austria, Schentil, and towards uh, Hungary, uh, that means to Hodos. Now, nowadays, uh, the main works are done in Gorenska rail, rail tracks towards Jesenice and Austria, and in and the main emphasis in the next year will be on the Primorska region towards Copper and also towards Sejana in Italy. Um, regarding uh, regarding construction, uh, we held between these nine subsidiaries a uh, company called Sejja JGP, which is a construction company. Uh, we, we, we see a lot of potential for cooperation with Italian companies, especially in joint uh, consortiums or joint participation within, with, uh, within the public tenders that will be published, not just in Slovenia, but also in all of the region, you know. So, uh, also I have to pinpoint out that we had a few successful cooperations with Italian construction companies already. For instance, uh, one of the best was joint cooperation with company named Rizani, and I think the project was in Croatia. Um, regarding our transport opportunities, uh, as I said, we made a big investment cycle uh, in moder modernization, and now we are going further on. Uh, for instance, for uh, passenger transport, uh, we will publish new public tender for 20 new passenger trains, seven locomotives, 20 new passenger coaches uh, for passenger transport, uh, 156 automated vending machines, and all for this will be public tenders. Then on the, on the, on the cargo side uh, for the freight transport, we will publish tenders for 40 new cargo locomotives, more than 1,000 new cargo wagons, construction, uh, also uh, we will do the construction of new log logistic uh, centers between Ljubljana and Maribor, that means towards uh, Hungary and Austria, and uh, we, we plan to build uh, around 2,000, uh, 200,000 square meter of warehouses and container ter terminals uh, in the region of Celia. Uh, so, uh, I was more focused on the opportunities that we can uh, we can we can offer to to Italy and to to, to your companies. Uh, so, regard if you have any questions regarding any of this, which I pin pinpoint out, uh, I will be glad to to answer, and I will leave you my contact so we can uh, we can we can see if we, we can make some uh, fruitful co cooperation. So, thank you, thank you for now. That is all from from my side. Thank you very much, Mr. Bukara. Actually, I have a question from one of our companies, and then I will have another one for Mrs. Bodlogger and one to, for our for the State Secretary because it's uh, we are talking about government. So I will briefly start with yours, as you are already online. Super. One of our companies asked if, by any chance, Slovenian Railways uh, has a need of. Uh, measurement or diagnostic services uh, or instruments uh, um, digitalized uh, uh, and uh, um, also to control the impact of uh, rail heavy international traffic on infrastructure. So is there the possibility for our companies to uh, in the future to offer this kind of services? Is there any need of this kind of services for you? Thank you. Of, of course. Uh, as I said, uh, we are, that means our investment cycle and moder modernization is based on two things. One is the construction site, and the other one is, that means uh, the construction, the, the mobility part, and the other one is uh, digitalization. So if there is a good solution from your side, we are, of course, at least ready to listen what kind of solutions you can offer to us. Very good, and we will uh, pass uh, all this information to you uh, because we know the company. So we will give, we will ask them, and we will put you in, in contact. Thank you very Super. much. Um, Thank you. I have a question that I think I should address to State Secretary Kosherok because uh, it's uh, uh, from one of the 
planning companies, is the Slovenian government planning some projects to access to European Union Green Deal for a renewable? Is there anything in program in the future for uh, uh, any project, government project, uh, in in the main main frame of Green Deal for renewable energy? Of course, there are. As, as as you heard, probably the presentation from Ms. Podloga Nidersic, who is my former ex colleague. Hello, Sasha. Uh, she she is, uh, was presenting you a lot of of things, especially in the field of. Uh, wind power. I mean, uh, Slovenia is, uh, let's say, poorly equipped in the field of, of, of the wind farms, wind power. Uh, HAC has some three projects in northeast of Slovenia where they are planning to build uh, some, I believe, 35, 50 megawatt installed power of wind capacity, meaning there is a huge potential for the renewables on for the Italian companies, as well as the solar. Solar, uh, okay, Slovenia is not let's say it's such a sunny country. Okay, it is sunny country, as you know, uh, said Nela, but on the other hand, the days of, of uh, how, how, how long the sun is shining uh, is not comparable, let's say, for example, to Portugal or, or uh, east uh, of, of Italy. But nevertheless, we have some good quality projects going on, especially now with the reconstruction and retaliation fund. There are some possibilities for, 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 for the investment as well for the energy efficiency. So these are the three main, main um, let's say, uh, areas uh, on which um, Slovenian government, especially our Department for Energy, uh, will focus on. So there, there are possibilities, especially in the field of renewables, as well all, all the other, all the rest of, of, of energy sector. Perfect. Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, I have uh, received a, a, a question for uh, Mrs. Podlogger, which uh, I'm not an expert. I don't know how much technical it is. I'll try to, 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 to say it. And uh, one company is asking, can we propose IPP focused on WTE and CHP plants? Sorry, you, you would have to repeat that to me. <laughs> okay. One company can, is asking if they can propose uh, IPP focus on WTE and CHP plants. If this is too technical, uh -huh, okay. we will... No, no. We, uh, otherwise, we will, uh, we will deal with it uh, uh, in return mm, form. But if you have no, some I, answer for this company, uh, shortly, I believe it has to do... Uh, sorry, I believe it has to do with the combined uh, heat and power. Uh, so I would suggest to the company to to contact us with further details uh, and we will get back to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We will do it. Uh, uh, so now, Serenella, may I add something? We have an expert also on CHP uh, plant. Ms. Dr. Agres is technical director of the largest cogeneration power plant in Ljubljana, in the capital. So. If there are any quite technical questions, I'm quite sure that Dr. Agres can, can answer them very well. Uh, he has a long, long history of experience, so please uh, contact him as well. Thank you. Sorry to, for the interruption. No, thank you very much, Mr. Servida. This is a very precious information for me. So I will uh, put the, the company in contact with Mr. Agres. Good. So at this point, we can go on with our program. and. Uh, um, and uh, I would uh, be very happy to pass the word to Giga Fischer. Uh, he is Director of Strategic Development at Luca Cooper, which is, uh, as we say in Italian, uh, Il Porto di Capodistria, uh, which doesn't need any presentation. So please, Mr. Fischer, take the word uh, and the floor. Can you hear me switch your mic on? Allora, buongiorno, se mi sente? Yeah, very good. Go on. Thank you. Ok, allora buongiorno, signora Marzoli, buongiorno ambasciatore. Allora, il mio italiano non è così buono, perciò continuo nella lingua inglese. 
Um, a lot of, um, I'm coming from. We lost you. Now it's better. Um, no, no, it's Port okay. of Co Luca Copper is a management company of the Port of Copper, um, as you said already. So now I'm sharing with you my my slides. Um, Port of Copper is a public limited company with uh, domestic and foreign shareholders. And according to Slovenian law, it means that we're obliged to communicate with the same information to all stakeholders. Uh, therefore, I will be presenting here only the public available infrastructure development in the port in the next couple of years. Um, <clears throat> but nevertheless, we have a concession granted to the management of the port area until 2043. And what is important for you is that we invest in infrastructure and superstructure in the port area. That means for the next <clears throat> more than 20 years. Uh, we are normally doing that with the public tenders, but I will come to that a little bit a, li a little bit later. Um, we have, let's say, a little bit of competition also on your side. It is called uh, Port of Trieste, Porto di Trieste. Um, but nevertheless, we are still the first container terminal in the Adriatic, uh, and we have the most cars throughput in one terminal all over the Mediterranean basin. <clears throat> Going a little bit ahead. Um, as I said, managing the port of copper, it means that we are also managing the 12 different terminals. What you can see on the picture, we normally say that uh, you can throughput in copper everything unless crude oil and gas, what you can put through in the Porto di Trieste. Mm. Uh, the infrastructure in the port of copper has been developed since uh, 1890. What you can see in the picture, the uh, copper was still an island. And today we have, let's say, one of the <clears throat> greenest ports in Europe, having a model split of cargo in 60% for the rail and 40% uh, for the road. Um, we have two, let's say, strategically defined cargo groups one is uh, con one is the containers and second one is the cars and then in my slide you can see how the container terminal has been extended and what we will do in the next couple of years today we are um, extending the uh, the container terminal towards towards italy towards our eastern side uh, for the next 100 meters, uh, most on the southern side and the northern side will follow in the next years until 2025. These are also other major ongoing investments in the port of Copper, having in mind that we are construction, constructing now the gate, truck gate uh, called Bertocchi gate, the garage for the cars. And we have recently completed one uh, Roro berth in the Basin 3 and the uh, uh, car terminal railway access <clears throat> just next to the Rorober. Um, <clears throat> let's go on. <clears throat> what, what is perhaps a little bit more um, important for you? Um, we have adopted in the 2019, just the, at the end of the year, our new strategy for the next five years. <clears throat> and uh, we are investing around half a billion, that means a little bit more than uh, 500 millions in the increasing the capacity of the port to be ready for the uh, larger throughput via the new rail track uh, copper, from Copper to Divacha. And um, <clears throat> from this uh, a little bit more than half a billion, 37% will be invested into public traffic infrastructure and uh, 29 into yard infrastructure and warehouses and all the rest of the equipment. On the <clears throat> right hand side, you can see the photo or the estimated uh, allocation of terminals at the end of 2025. Um, this is what I can reveal to you. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot reveal to you more. As I said, we are a public listed company and we have uh, domestic and also foreign uh, stakeholders, uh, shareholders. Uh, so our next investment will go into the birds for strategic cargo groups. Um, one of them is containers, second one is um, 
are the cars. Then the next uh, investment, bigger investment, will be in uh, storage area capacities, also for the strategic as well as for the other uh, cargo groups. Uh, we will have to dredge a little bit uh, according to the needs and, of course, uh, focus ourselves also on the management of excavated materials. Uh, nevertheless, um, last but not least, we will have to also reconstruct and make some improvements also the uh, inside the port in, uh, in the road uh, infrastructure. <clears throat> Everything what I have uh, told you will be done via the public tenders and all public tenders will be available on public tender uh, Slovenian portal and what you already know everything what is over 5.3 million euros also on European public tender portal um, in Slovenian it, it, they will be published published in Slovenian language you know I also I think in uh, the European public tender portal they'll be published also in Slovenian language and if you will need anything then please contact us and we will try to uh, get in contact with you or provide you every uh, needed information for the companies from the Italy to be part of, part of the public tenders from the Port of Copper. Um, this is all from my side. So um, thank you very much for your attention and I hope we will cooperate in the nearest future. Thank you very much. Um, you mentioned uh, uh, what could be or appears to be probably a, a critical point and it's uh, regarding the tenders. Uh, I already have uh, a couple of questions from uh, companies but this is not the first time. Um, we, uh, as Italian trade agency in Ljubljana, we regularly publish all uh, the tenders uh, of, uh, of the Republic of Ljubljana on every sector. Uh, so we publish on our website and we have a monthly newsletter where we report all the tenders. But many of these tenders are only in Slovenian. Uh, so I don't know, um, this is this is critical, uh, uh, of course, you can imagine. So, of course, the European, uh, European portal uh, uh, has uh, the tenders also in other languages, but um, is there a way of, uh, uh, or, or do all of you have in program in the future, or you already do, to have this uh, these tenders uh, also in English at least, uh, and this uh, I would like also the State Secretary to, to hear this, uh, this question uh, because I know it might be critical, it happened to me already with other Italian companies uh, that uh, they need uh, uh, special attention uh, for these tenders who are in, in, in Slovenian and uh, of course uh, uh, to translate uh, a tender of a few million euros, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, very critical uh, if it's not an expert uh, uh, to do this uh, uh, because it's a very delicate matter, you know, sometimes you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, thousands of euros. So, um, any, any of the speaker can, uh, or maybe you, Mr. Fisher, can give me uh, an answer on that? I will try to answer like this: that uh, on European European tender portal, there will there they they there have to for the language it has to be the one language of the European Union. So this means that also Slovenian is one of the 27 European languages, as well as Italian is one of the 27 European languages. But normally, what I can say, if there was any question from the potential bidders, we normally offer them the support which we have to provide to everyone who would like to bid for, for the uh, on the um, public tender okay thank you very much uh, anyway we as uh, italian trade uh, agency office uh, we we try to do our best to support also italian companies on this uh, so uh, i hope uh, you know we will try to overcome in future if there is any problem, please, please uh, I'm saying this to the Italian companies, please contact us and let us know and we will help you uh, as much as we can. Uh, okay, so at this point I would uh, uh, 
as to uh, Certomir Remetz, director of the Housing Fund of the Republic of Slovenia, to uh, talk about uh, uh, their uh, future project uh, in, in this country. Please, Mr. Remetz. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, do, you, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you for a uh, kind invitation. I will present you in short uh, our investment activities uh, uh, in the next years. Uh, we are main uh, provider of uh, national housing policy 2015 to, to, to 2025. And uh, in the first half time, we have completed many activities uh, from pilot project for young and older persons uh, to uh, uh, cooperate uh, with uh, municipalities and uh, city housing funds in Slovenia. Uh, and we also participated in preparation of new housing law. Uh, but uh, most important uh, duty is uh, change to increase public rental housing from around uh, 3,000 uh, in the year 2015 to 10,000 uh, units uh, till 2025. And uh, our main activity is uh, construction of new uh, housing. Uh, and I will show you uh, uh, some of our plans uh, for, for the next years and some active projects. Now I will try to go Okay. Huh. This is back, back. Uh, okay, do 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 you hear me? Uh-huh. Yes, we hear you very well. Thank you. Ah, okay, okay. Uh as you see, uh uh, our planning uh, uh, project cover all uh, regions in Slovenia and all uh, bigger and also uh, smaller cities uh, where is a lack of uh, rental housing. So you can see from Ljubljana, Maribor, Kran, Novo Mesto, Gorica, uh, uh, Koper, all together over 2,700 uh, flats. Uh, all these projects are, uh, are running uh, uh, or they are in preparation uh, in different stages. Uh, so you can see uh, three of our projects now running. Um, uh, the first I'm sorry, one. Mr. Remet. I'm sorry, yes. Mr. Remet. Uh, we 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 hear you, but uh, if you you have a presentation, I don't see it. You don't see the presentation. No. Ah. Mm -hmm. What is this? You should, uh, uh, if you have it on your desktop, please. You should press uh, share the screen on the bottom of the screen, so you can uh, uh, share it with us. No. I have a problem because I clicked on no, no, no. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just, just a moment. Please. We all have to face this new modality of uh, Having our meetings in a, in a virtual mode and uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Now it's working. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, now is better. Uh, so I go just uh, on the first one uh, where you see all this. What I told before. Uh, all the regions with the with the with the bigger cities with uh, with over 2,700 flats, and uh, now the projects uh, which are running 
uh, on in Ljubljana, the, the, the biggest settlement. Uh, the first part was, uh, was built a few years ago, and now uh, our project has uh, uh, almost 500 units, uh, also with 25 sheltered housing for the elderly. And uh, uh, for us, very important is uh, community for young, uh, uh, which has uh, uh, 110 residential units. This is a pilot project where we will try uh, uh, to manage this uh, uh, as a as a as a new way of housing for the for the young from 18 to to, to 29 years, which are uh, could be students or also uh, those who are uh, working and they uh, don't have a family yet. And uh, the third one is the project in Maribor. It's more uh, is the most advanced project uh, with uh, nearly zero uh, energy housing. Uh, and all other facilities uh, need, needed for a, for a new settlement. Uh, uh, all three should be finished in the next year. And uh, just to show you uh, that uh, we are that we cover with our project all uh, twelve uh, uh, statistical regions in Slovenia. Uh, the biggest one is Ljubljana and Maribor, green and blue in the middle. And uh, as you see, uh, in, the, in the next year, uh, the increase will be the biggest. Uh, it is, uh, it will, uh, this is the result of all our activities in the last years. Uh, so the increase will go uh, for uh, over 1,000 flats per year and then we will uh, will 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 slow down to uh, 500 uh, at the at the at the year 2025 and uh, but uh, what uh, i can say that our investment potential is could be uh, 100 million uh, euros per year and depends on the political decision uh, how fast we will continue with this, but but the wave uh, has been uh, prepared and will move uh, uh, our our rental housing uh, uh, toward 10,000 units in the year 2025. Uh, what is most important that uh, we are for uh, Italian uh, construction company that uh, we are looking for, uh, for uh, uh, new providers uh, with uh, advanced technology and uh, probably cheaper, uh, cheaper construction uh, because uh, the capacity of Slovenian companies is, uh, is uh, now at the moment is, uh, is, uh, is full up and, uh, and uh, we, we need uh, some uh, more competition. So uh, all of you are welcome to our Slovenia National Housing Fund, and uh, uh, we can uh, we can discuss uh, uh, one to one uh, whenever you uh, want. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I, at this point, uh, I think that uh, um, I would uh, I would give the word. Uh, I, I can hear there's someone with the, the mic on. This is nice. So I would ask everybody to switch off the microphones, and uh, I will uh, uh, I would uh, give the word to uh, Mr. Slovenko Henigman, uh, director of the Association of Advisors engineering at the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Ljubljana, which is the homolog association uh, to OICE. And then, uh, if we are perfectly on time, and I thank you all the speakers for keeping uh, the schedule tight, I think I will have another couple of questions uh, for, uh, for uh, some of the speakers. Please, uh, Mr. Hedgepan, you have the floor. Yes. Can 
Can you see the presentation? Uh, not, not yet. If it is on your desktop, you should uh, press uh, share the screen. Maybe we are almost there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Slovenko Henigman. I'm coming from the National Association for Consulting Engineers of Slovenia. And uh, hello to everybody. And hello me to a special hello for Roberto Carpaneto, who's coming from the Sister Association uh, in Italy. We are doing the same activities as in Italy, and we are also the members of EFCA and uh, FIDIC. In my presentation, I will give some index investment comparison. Then I will come to the activities in the Chamber of Commerce of our uh, association. We'll give some in infrastructure investment comparison from Oxford Economics. What are the challenges in companies on the field of investment? Uh, I show you one good example in Slovenia and come to the conclusions. Uh, of course, we should focus on the future, but uh, we should not forget what's happened yesterday. In the last uh, economic crisis from 2008 uh, and until, I would say, uh, 2016, 17, we had an uh, extremely big crisis and it was the, the hardest in the construction sector. For give you only one ex uh, explain, uh, from the first 13, 30 uh, construction companies in Slovenia, 23 bankrupt. So in the crisis, we make we made a lot of um, analyses and, and activities how to start with with the new investments, and we made uh, some comparison with colleagues in in Austria and with the institutes institution from Austria, and you see the index in the Slovenia how it was, and we saw that the Austrian had all the time the same investment. And uh, also the figures from different uh, uh, fields of uh, infrastructure show us, it was in Slovenia, you see these two uh, graphs, and uh, for example, in Asfinac in Austria, we said, we, we, we saw very, uh, very homogeneous every year, the same investment. And so uh, we established three pilots, what? Uh, for the future, uh, how to have the investment stable. And first of all was the establishing the golden infrastructure investment role, rule, uh, establishing a strategic presidential council on investment and construction, uh, where we um, uh, invited all the important client construction company, consulting engineering company. And so we have in this presidential uh, council all the important uh, people from the from the industry in the field of investments and of course we invite also uh, the politicians to give us uh, some uh, some uh, overlook and so on and we established an academy of construction investment uh, to to give a uh, fast overview what means each of these three parts the golden infrastructure investment rules. Uh, it's not the fiscal policy. So I put here from Wikipedia what means the fiscal policy, because the golden infrastructure rules means a stable long-term planning and re realization, six-year plan, but this plan is slicing. Every year uh, we, we have, uh, when the last year is remaining, we have a new year, and that means uh, again six years, six year plan. And uh, 
it's very important that we have the investment in different sector all sustainable in roads, in railway, water and energy facilities and so on. You cannot put all the money from roads to railways or opposite it and so on. We have to have uh, in all fields some stability. And of course, it's very important that uh, the state is invested uh, against cyclical investment. So when the private sector is investment, the state should invest uh, some uh, low, lower and opposite. Uh, I think here is one problem uh, because uh, here is the explanation. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, in 2018, the, the Ministry for Infrastructure prepared the first, uh, first slicing plan and uh, it is the following the golden rule that we prepared. You, you see it here. This is the, the first page of the document. And um, one of the, of the, the three parts is also, also establishing the Academy of Construction Investment. The Academy is now uh, uh, dealing in three years. Uh, we had the, five, the, the fifth uh, ac Academy in this autumn. Uh, I think that this is a very good example how the industry is teaching the industry. We have the big, uh, the best uh, uh, engineers in schooling uh, and invite young engineers, but also lawyers, economists, and give them uh, a very good uh, school, very practical school, so they can learn what's, what it's now actually. Uh, here, I would like to show you some uh, figures from Oxford Economics. What is the situation in infrastructure and other uh, uh, parts comparison with other uh, uh, countries? Uh, I will go very briefly across this. You see that in Slovenia, the infrastructure investment in GDP is, is low and it's lower from year to year. And so we have this big plan for the future to come uh, again uh, higher. I will go very fast to this. Uh, you can see that in GDP, uh, the, the figures from 2008, uh, if you compare to now, it's, it's very low. And you can see then uh, what uh, in all fields. What are the challenges in companies on the field of investment? If you see this, these words, how many of us have known these words five years ago? So the change, uh, the, the world is changing so fast today, and also in our uh, in infrastructure, and we we have to 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 be very fast uh, because the the world is changing uh, very fast. Uh, digital three uh, D printing, uh, also buildings, utilities are going by this technology. Uh, we are member of FIDIC, also the Italian Association is member of FIDIC. Uh, FIDIC is preparing many conferences, but the biggest infrastructure conference is every year. Last year it was in Suat, Mexico. And you see the biggest awards for the, 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 the biggest uh, infrastructure projects in the world. You see who are the winners. And I can explain you that in 2018, it was the same in Berlin. And uh, if this year in September in Geneva, it will be the next conference. I, I hope it will be possible live. I think it will be the same. So we have to do a lot in Europe and we, do, we can do it only together. To work together, to put the ideas together and to be also on these places, let's say in front. And uh, of course, we, it's very important for our industry to get, uh, to get uh, new people, young people, to get uh, very good uh, people in our, to our industry. Uh, of course, digitalization is the priority. I, I will show you here one, one um, example from the construction sector. It's from the asphalt industry in Slovenia. It's very developed and we can see the length of asphalt, the production of asphalt, everything is 
digital and uh, we are working on it to be more digital. As a consulting engineer, I could show you also some, some uh, examples in designing, in BIM, building information modeling for the next time. I would like to come to the conclusion. We have the next goals for the future, very important goals. Stability by the golden rule all the time. Digitalization is the priority number one, I would say, in planning, in design, in execution of work. And of course, education and gathering of employees in the industry. And last but not least, uh, least, I would like to say uh, that it's very important that we work together, as I, say, as I said, to work together in uh, different countries, outside from our both countries, and of course, to work together also in Italy and in Slovenia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Henigman. Very interesting. Um, thank you also to all the Italian companies that are putting questions. Uh, some uh, uh, questions are related to the way uh, to participate to the public tenders uh, in all the sectors. As I said before, our office here in Ljubljana is regularly publishing all the information and uh, some uh, tenders uh, have a way to apply, uh, a traditional way to apply in paper, others are electronic. So we will deal uh, with all the information as uh, uh, the, 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 the tenders are coming out and uh, please refer to our office for all uh, all these uh, um, future tenders that we uh, are monitoring every every day. There is, a, a, um, uh, apart from some specific question related to the railways, uh, that I will put uh, then I will pass directly to uh, Slovenske Zelenice. Uh, one I think it's quite interesting, and I will put, if I may, to State Secretary Blash uh, Kosharok. And it's coming from a one a very important Italian company, uh, and is uh, uh, and they they say how uh, Slovenian considers investment in cybersecurity. I read since uh, uh, of course they all may manage national critical infrastructure. So how cybersecurity infra infrastructure enter in this big picture of. Uh, uh, investments uh, or a future project, and then uh, uh, when you answer the question, I will uh, give the, 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 the word to uh, my director general for his final remarks. Please, uh, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Um, yes, of course, cybersecurity plays one of the, let's say, or will play one of the major roles in today's world, so to say. Um, I, have, I had some contacts with your, your distinguished company, Leonardo, probably the, the question came from them. So we are in a regular contact. Of course, we have to put up here a team of experts in Slovenia, especially in the range of um, energy security, so to call it. Cybersecurity in energy sector is what we are leaking uh, in uh, this time, let's say, uh, in Slovenia right now. So uh, some of the Major players are today with us, meaning the HAC, also Energetica Ljubljana plays an important role in, in cybersecurity because they are providing heat and electricity to the, our capital of Ljubljana. Then, you know, we have the nuclear power plant, we have distribution companies, and we also have the, the transmission service operator, our, our distinguished company, LS. And uh, of course, um, you know, we have to put this uh, interesting uh, thing uh, together in a way that the critical infrastructure, which is one of the named companies uh, involved, uh, put up a team of experts and to, to base uh, this, this top down. Because now every company of their own, they have um, some kind of uh, IT, cyber security, maybe OT security, but our wish or my wish is to put this everything under the same umbrella. And um, 
As said, uh, in these times, um, cybersecurity, infrastructure security of the critical infrastructure will play an important role. And one of the major issues um, for, let's say, our main date will, will be to build up this uh, cybersecurity center in a way, whether it will be with the, the, the transmission service operator or it will be a separate company. Uh, we'll see, but of course, our next steps um, in the first quarter of 21 will be in, in, in the cybersecurity sector. So, hopefully, I have answered your question. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Yes, it was very clear. So, we will follow closely. And uh, uh, it is my great pleasure to give the word to my Director General, the Director General of the Italian Trade Agency, Roberto Longo, for his uh, closing remarks. Please, the floor is yours. Thanks, Serena. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the State Secretary of the Slovenian Minister of Infrastructure, Mr. Blaž Kosorok, His Excellency the Ambassador of Italy, Carlo Campanile, all the Italian and Slovenian speakers. Uh, among them have close friends like uh, Er Vincenzo, Ercole Salazar, uh, Maria, Rosa, uh, Maria Rosaria Fragasso, Roberto Carpaneto plus Marco Ragusa. They are all of them, they are cooperating uh, since a long time all over the world to promote the Italian companies, uh, not only here in Slovenia, but it's important to say also to the uh, Slovenian friends that uh, I was participating before to another similar workshop uh, with the Poland friends, Polish friends in a um, few minutes ago, it's, it's concluded. And we were talking about infrastructure and energy. It means that uh, the theme of energy and, uh, and uh, infrastructure are uh, sectors that the Italian companies are seriously involved and they would in enlarge the participation of the Italian companies within this uh, project. Uh, I'm also very glad for a, a, such a large attendance by the Italian companies because it's important to say that uh, Slovenia is an important partner, commercial partner, but is also a, a general economic and commercial partner of uh, Italy. Construction and engineering and energy are among the key sectors of the Italian economy, as, as I said before. But as we all know, the pandemic has upset the production system from digital to infrastructure. This will be changes of the Italian economy in the post-COVID transformation, with historical shortcomings to be recovered and reforms that can be no longer postponed. Powerful injection of funds from Europe with the, the uh, so-called recovery fund, or much better, the uh, next generation uh, EU, um, in the coming months, and it, it will be necessary to decide how to use them and how the European countries will be able to play the card, what looks like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And this is very, very important. It's, uh, from my point of view, like a, a once in high life opportunity. It means that we have the opportunity to cooperate, Italian and uh, Slovenian companies, to try to foster such kind of. Uh, of cooperation in these uh, three important sectors. The completion of the trans-European transport network, because the so-called TNT, that also involves the territories of the two nations, of our two nations, may increase uh, European Union GDP by 1.7% and create around 800,000 jobs by 2030. However, the realization of the TNT requires uh, European Union resources that they been, can be used to attract private funds. As proposed in the European Union budget for 2027, as well as in the updated version of the Connecting Euro facility and the Invest in uh, European Union. As it's already pointed by the Ambassador Campanile, and, and would congratulate him, him for this important event with Serena Marzoli, because it's, uh, these events are I'm sure that they will help to foster such kind of relations, also the participation of the Italian companies to projects in uh, Slovenia. The partnership between Italy and Slovenia is traditionally very important. Officially, there are uh, currently 
more almost 250 Italian companies that invest and are permanently based in Slovenia. But the reality is much larger. 14.3% of the over 8,000 Slovenian companies with foreign capital have an Italian share. And this is something very, very, very important to be pointed now. I hope that from this event on more Italian fil firms will decide to cooperate and start a new business with their Slovenian counterparts. The Italian trade agency, as well as the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation with the embassy in, in Ljubljana, and are to help with all information and assisted to further develop their business to a large number of services. So please, as Serena said before, don't hesitate to contact our office in Ljubljana, but I've seen that also the local authorities, the, the ministries and uh, the uh, chambers and the association of industries are available to help and assist the Italian company to be much more present in Slovenia. Thanks a lot and have a good day. Bye. Thank you very much to the Director General. Thank you to all the speakers. Um, very highly qualified uh, presentations, very interesting project, full of perspective and opportunities for our companies. Please, again, contact my office. We are at disposal of all the Italian companies and we will answer to all the questions that I received and that uh, could not be uh, answered before, but uh, we had a, a, we wanted to keep this uh, this uh, meeting uh, quite uh, operative, uh, and so we will give uh, appropriate follow up to everything. Thank you again. Thank you to His Excellency State Secretary Blas Koshara. Thank you to His Excellency the Ambassador Campo Carlo Campanile. Thank you to my Director General and all the speakers.